We're learning sign language, Venezuelan sign language, with this organization called Punta Fi for about two months before shooting. And I told the ladies that were teaching us, hey, um, can you bring me every single young man from 20 to 30 years of age that's deaf in the entire country, will pay the bus ticket, the plane ticket, it doesn't matter, they gotta be here in five days in the capital. And so they, they rose up to the challenge, they brought seven, uh, eight uh, young men who were deaf who had never acted before, and Angelo Lopez uh, came in last. He's a, a young man from El Valle, Venezuela, which is a very poor part of Caracas, a slum, really. And uh, he had never acted in his life before. And he answered the call through a WhatsApp thread. He almost didn't go. He really almost didn't go to the casting because he's like, what am I gonna do casting for a movie? This is crazy. But it was his girlfriend and his mother who said, you know what, just go. Just go read the sides and go and do your best and see what happens. And then he came in, 30 seconds in, I knew it was him, his essence. It was just the way that he lit up the room, the power that he had in his eyes. It didn't matter if he knew the lines or not, if he was sweating or not, nervous. He got the part. And we worked really, I mean, he worked really hard. Uh, he studied the script, he worked with the interpreters, he worked with Carlos a lot before pre-production, before um, shooting the movie. And then he worked with me when I went down there. And he did this, this incredible job. Um, he's already won two awards for Best Actor in International Film Festivals. And he's looking to continue his, his acting career. Mm -hmm. Troy Kotsur, who is an Oscar-winning actor for the movie Coda, that one that he won Best uh, Supporting Actor, saw the film, he was so moved by his performance that he went to LA, he sponsored a couple of our screenings, and he's trying to help Angelo to help him get into either an Apple TV series or one of his projects so he can continue his career. So the lesson, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But I think that the real moral and the lesson to this is you know, you listen to the women in your life, because <laughs> they know better, and if he wouldn't have listened to his girlfriend and his mom, maybe he wouldn't have answered the call, but okay. here we are. Okay, okay. So, uh, as a Venezuelan, like you and the rest of the team, I'm very proud of this film. I told you that already. And this is a Venezuelan film that was nominated to the Oscars this year, so... Uh, yes. So, we are... <laughs> film, very written, important film to the country, as you know, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have told you about, and I, I, I asked you this question before, yeah, it, to me, uh, um, the fact that he's a deaf uh, person, and in Venezuela, we don't make that many films that, you know, highlight their, you know, their experience, but also that he, he's a gay deaf person, so, and, you know, a lot of films in Venezuela are very, um, stereotypical and you know doesn't really give you a good you know impression of being gay and being deaf particularly so talk about that talk about uh, how the movie has been received in Venezuela the gay community the deaf community what does that mean to our country well um, it was thank you for asking that and um, I think it was something that I wanted to uh, do a movie that painted with all the colors of, that we have in our country, in Venezuela. And um, one of my my brother uh, and my production designer in the film, Vincente Zambrano, um, is gay and is from uh, Ciudad Bolivar. I mean, he lives in Maracay. So he would always tell me these stories and these things that, um, that I just, uh, I, I didn't see myself, because I, I also left the country when I was 12, and I said, this is important that we put this in the picture, that we have this in the picture, that we see this part of our society, which also is uh, not accepted, not only of people with disability, but also of the gay community as well. And that that still exists, the homophobia still exists. And, and, it's, and it's sometimes it's mind boggling as to how, and, but it does exist because ignorance still exists everywhere really. And, um, but it also presented, um, an amazing opportunity for Leo's character because Leo 
if you look at him, he's a quintessential macho mm -hmm. Latino, you know. So how is he going to deal with that um, with that thing when his brother tells him, you know, what I'm I'm gay and, and this is this is who I who I am, and how is he going to deal with that, right? And I thought, okay, not all, not because of the acceptance, but because of the danger, mm -hmm. and because of the stories that my my uh, friend Vince has told me. You know, if I was um, Vince's father in that situation, I'd be I'd you know, be worried. I'd be like, you know, who are you telling this to? Who, how, who? What streets are you going through? Don't go out late at night because you're putting yourself at risk that some people are going to hurt you because of who you are. And I don't want that. So it was a it was a moment where I thought Leo needs to become or I need to show the father figure that he has been to this to this young man. Um, my sister's 15 years older than me in real life. Uh, so she was a mother figure. So in, in a way, I know that relationship well. And it's the first time that we see Leo say, uh, really step up as a father and say, I'll give you everything, everything that I need in order to survive, I'll give it to you so you can have the life that you've always wanted so that you can be free to be who you want. Yeah. Fantastic, yes. Um, talking about the, the sound of the movie and the, the, the music, the music of Los Llanos, the, the Venezuelan music of the center of the country, that was beautiful, that scene when they played the, the, the harp and the instruments, uh, that brought me back. So uh, it's beautiful what you did. Talk about the, the sound and how you, how you work, and then I have another question about for you, that one, uh, what was the reason for us not to hear the song at the end of the movie, the song that he wrote and he performed? Uh, but talk about the, the music. Well, actually, the, the music was written by Sandro Morales, Venezuelan composer. Uh, we have also Juan Carlos Rodriguez, he was the music supervisor. And actually, and, and Sandro made a an amazing job with the music. Uh, the first time I heard it, I listened to the, I, I heard the movie in the theater, it, uh, it was last week. I have seen the music tons of times in my house, in my studio, but on the theater, the first time it was last, last week, and when I came here, I, the first thing I said was the music is amazing. It's amazing, Sandro made a, a beautiful job. The folklore, music, the instrumental, all the composing, it was really, 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 really great. Um, and that scene in particular, then they're in the park. Um, well, actually, that was a Miguel idea. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the museum, the, yeah, the, and the, the plane by the, by the river. But yeah, but that, 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 that scene is amazing. That's gorgeous, amazing. yeah. But tell us about the sound design. The sound design, well, actually, it, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Uh, I always say, it, um, in this particular movie, when sound design, you have a, you come with a, a huge palette of sound to use when you when you want to create a sound effect for a particular a, a scene, atmosphere, and everything. You can use a lot of sound effects, putting in layers, and you create that effect, that sound effects. But in this particular movie, you have to be so precise uh, choosing the, the sound effect. That was the difficult part of this movie. And also, of course, giving a voice to Alex, to our main character. How we did it? Well, we did it. Sam, we talked. Um, and, and I we talked and said, OK, how, how are we going to do? And, and, and we said, OK, let's try to make the audience feel how it's to be in Alex's shoes for seconds. That's why you we use the vibration. What he feels. What he feels. What was that? What's to be in Alex's shoes mm -hmm. is through the the vibration, his own low tones. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, but, but it was a, a really good. Um, it's a, it was a really good experience. It was a great experience that I have to to thanks. Miguel, count on me um, for doing this, this picture. Beautiful, yeah. Thank you. There's, there's a lot of things in the sound design that, uh, like, like, like I said, it's just details, right? 
details that you don't necessarily like be understand or actually consciously but you feel them. Like for example the motorcycle. The motorcycle starts off with a lot of like treble and like th like really like high pitched sound in a way and kinda clunking its way through because it's it's breaking down. And at the end of the picture it has a lot more bass mm -hmm. and it roars. Yeah. Even more so than one of those bikes would actually roar in real life. Yes. But the reason for that, and the reason why Enrique did that, was because that's Leo. Leo has to is at the beginning of the picture, he's limping. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the picture, he fulfilled. He he's becomes rolling. the man that he needs to be for his brother, and goes forth back home to live the life that he's always wanted to live. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So those little details, also like how Acarigua sounds, is different than how Caracas sounds. That's right. Yeah. It's very different, right? Yeah, yeah. When they get to the contest, that place to them is, is Tokyo. Yes. So it seems to sound like this cacophony of, of noise. And, and it's not something that the audience innately uh, understands immediately, but you, it's a feel. And you feel, okay, there's something different about this part of the picture. Yeah, a lot of us that are from Caracas, we can feel that. I mean, I, I immediately when I saw those as they are riding in Caracas and uh, you know they go through the tunnel. I mean, I feel that. So talk about this 